How you doing, I'm Matt. In this video, we're gonna be making this DIY outdoor sectional with common lumber that you can buy at your local home store. We're gonna be using basic tools to build it with. We'll show you how to weather seal it so that it lasts longer in the weather. In the description below, you'll find links to the build plans as well as the tools and supplies I use to make this project. So the first thing I gotta do is cut out the frame for the, both the long side and the short side of this DIY sectional. And so I'm gonna be using common two by six pine here and I'm gonna cut two pieces at 77 inches long, eight pieces, 21 and three quarter, and then also two pieces at 39 inches and that will make up both frames. So I'm using the Mask of Products uh, M2 pocket hole jig. It's easily adjustable. So we're gonna do inch and a half stock because that's what a, that's what a common two by six is. You just set inch and a half there. We'll set our depth of our bit we want drill with this guide. So a lot of times if you're drilling pocket holes, you'll notice that sometimes they'll bust through if, you're, if you've drilled too much into your hole. So what I like to do is I'll actually back this off maybe an eighth inch. That helps out a lot. Now it's time to assemble both frames. I'm using tight bond two wood glue. Make sure you spread ample amounts here and then also two pocket hole screws on each side. I put each end on first, then I equally space the center supports. This is gonna keep everything nice and stable as well as square. Once the long frame's done, do the short frame the exact same way. And using clamps here will help keep everything from moving on you. So we got both frames built. Now we're gonna put some decking on there. I'm just gonna use one by sixes because uh, they're lighter weight and they're a little less expensive than a two by six right now. Trying to keep this as low cost as possible. So I'm just gonna cut four one by sixes, the length of this frame here to the exact length, which is 77 inches, I believe. Cut four of those and we'll put a gap in between each one, just space them equally so that water can drain out and it's not holding water. So we got our basic frame built. Now we're gonna build the legs and I'm gonna cut uh, four 26 and a half inch pieces for the uprights and there'll be a piece on top. It'll make a total of 28 inches tall. Let's build some legs. So now I'm just assembling the legs and this is the uh, upright of the leg and this will be the second upright of the leg on the other side. Of course, the top here is your armrest. I like to assemble everything upside down. I got it clamped in place, I got it glued, and then we'll just put uh, some, you make sure you're using outdoor screws here. Main thing here is you wanna make sure the front face is flush. And one good tip is to go ahead and start both screws and that'll kinda hold everything in place. Even though you do have a clamp, sometimes that pocket hole tends to uh, throw everything off if you don't have both of them already started. This is a leg assembly. The section will actually attach to this side because this is actually the leg assembly will sit like this. Your frame assembly is heavy. Your frame assembly will actually uh, come in here like this and those pocket holes will be covered. And that's why you turn them that way. We'll actually mount the top of the frame be at uh, 17 inches here. And full disclosure, you won't have to worry about this because I've already corrected this in the plans that I'm making. This is the backboard. I'm gonna take it off and make a longer board because so that's actually gonna come together like that. And then I'm gonna take this board off. Actually, what happened was I forgot that there needed to be legs back here on this backside. So I just, I made a mistake, so. But it wasn't too, too late to fix it, so that's a great thing. We're gonna put the legs on right here. It's gonna be similar to the other style leg, except for it's gonna to come to here, and then we'll take this board and extend it all the way across for the back to lay on. You'll see what I mean when we get to the back. So this is the short side of the sectional. I've got it standing up here so I can get my measurement. So I'm building the short leg for the back, and I know that uh, I'm gonna need it to come uh, to, the, to the same as this is. So it's 16 and a quarter from the bottom of the leg up to the top of this two by six frame. And I'm gonna build this the same to go on that back corner because there will be a one by on top to make it 17 total, which is what this will be when we have our one by on top like that. So the one by will actually go all the way by this and onto the top of this. And for the short leg, you're just gonna make sure to put this support in there up next to the top of the support so that you'll have something to attach the frame to. 
So we're gonna start assembling the, the sectional now. And so this is gonna be the, what's well, gonna be your armrest up top. We want our seat height here at 17 inches because our cushions were gonna go on there like that. They're about four inches thick, but when you sit on them, they squish pretty good down to about an inch. Uh, that'll give us about an 18 inch seat height, give or take. I'm gonna glue this on and screw it uh, because it's gonna be outside on. And it'll take care, if you glue your joints together, it'll take care of any squeaking and all that good stuff. Wet glue, wet glue. I can drop this. Oof. Struggle is real. Struggle is real. Again, these are exterior screws. Make sure you're using exterior screws or they'll rust and cause problems later. Probably better pre-drill that. Last thing wanna happen here is go ahead and have a board split because we didn't pre-drill our holes. Before I get too much further along, I'm gonna take my router. I've got a, a white side chamfer bit. It's a 45 degree chamfer bit. I'm gonna chamfer the bottom of these legs and then also the top of these uh, armrests so that it doesn't hurt your arm and on the bottom of the legs is so that they don't split and bust. Uh, if you just leave them square, then they have a tendency to chip off and stuff. If you don't have a router, just take your sander and sand that over until you get kind of a rounded edge. That's what I'm doing now. All right, all right, all right. So this is the short side. I'm putting glue here where this short leg is gonna be attached. And again, this, if you just wanna screw it together, you can, but it's gonna keep it from squeaking and stuff later uh, as it, uh, the wood expands and contracts in this weather. Uh, even if you've got it stained like we're going to, you wanna go, it's a great idea to go ahead and put glue on this thing. So I went ahead and rounded over those bottoms of this leg too. We're just gonna set this in there. The main thing you're looking for here is you wanna make sure this top side is flush and this back side is flush. We'll just screw that in. Is this right? Yeah. So now you see that this piece will actually come in there and it'll attach here underneath and then we'll have our leg on the other end. <laughs> and then that one by run right across the top there. It's like 63 and three quarters. Yep. So you can really see it starting to come together now. Now I did not glue these down because uh, if they ever become, because for one, they're one buys and they may weather uh, less well than the two by material. So I want to be able to take these up and replace them if needed. So I didn't glue these down, but I am screwing them at two per intersection there. Now we're cooking. Watch out. Now we're gonna put this on. This is the leg on the long section and we're gonna do it just like we did the other one. We want the top at 17 inches from the bottom of the leg. Yep, get up there. So it's actually 10 and three quarters of an inch to the bottom. And then we'll attach that with glue and screws as well. I'm gonna take measure go. So I kind of messed up. I wasn't thinking to drill these two holes on the outside when they're actually supposed to go on the inside, so don't do that. I'm gonna stick two screws in there to cover the holes up. All right, so right before we start building the back, so we're building an angle back and we want to go ahead and join this together even though it's gonna be extremely hard to move. If you're building this as a modular piece, you would leave these separate at this point and then you could go ahead and build your backs and just have it to where the backs would attach to the base separately. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to glue and screw into from this sideboard into this and then from this piece into this, which is why we built this piece like this. Uh, there's legs on the back side to support the back. The middle right here in this corner shouldn't need a leg because it's all tied together. Now, if you're not tying this together and you wanna make this two piece, you can certainly do that. All you would need to do is put a leg right here on the corner and a leg under this and it would be a two piece and you can move them uh, separately. But we're gonna build a one piece because we don't want it to move separately. So 
So I'm working on the back pieces now, or the back angles. You should have some drops from earlier cuts on this stuff. You can use those. Uh, so this is a seven degree angle, and this is a 10 degree angle. Uh, you can see that there's a little bit of difference there. This is fairly straight up. This is leaning back a little more. I think 10 degrees will be a more comfortable angle. And so we're gonna go at 10 degrees. These are 17 and a half inches uh, tall. So if you don't have a miter saw and you still want those 10 degree angles, you can use a speed square to uh, get the same angle and mark it and then cut it with a circular saw. Just be real uh, cautious about getting that angle correct. But you can do it with a speed square and a circular saw if you don't have a miter saw. So now it's time to start putting the backs on. We got the 10 degree angle on the top and the bottom, and then we're gonna put a top piece around the top to protect that end grain. It'll help it last longer and it'll look better. And we're just gonna set these on there on these pieces that are on the edges where the uh, armrests are. I'm just gonna screw into the armrest from the side and that'll secure it there. No need to secure it anywhere else. One here, one on the corner, one in the middle, one on the end. So one, two, three, four, five. And the ones out here in the center will be pocket hole down into the uh, structure. So just to show you, if I'm 200 pounds. <laughs> this corner is very robust. So you don't have to worry about it. Uh, if you put it together this way, you don't have to have that leg sticking in here. Kind of takes away from the look of it. So before I start putting the backs on, I'm gonna go ahead and take this opportunity to sand all of this. Uh, I'm gonna do 80 grit and then 120 grit and that's it. And then I'm just gonna kind of knock the edges off. I'll probably take my uh, chamfer bit here on these edges and hit these edges all the way around just to give it a little more detail. You don't have to do that. You can you, uh, just hit it with the sander and just kind of knock that rough edge off. Once the cushion's on there, your leg shouldn't be touching that anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill some pocket holes in the top. So this is actually turned upside down. This is the top of my back rail. We'll put one pocket hole here, one here, and that's to screw that top face piece on with. And then some of them will have pocket holes on the bottom. Uh, a couple of them will. And then the rest of them will be, or the two end pieces won't have it on the bottom. And I went ahead and sanded all these as well, just to make things easier. So now we're gonna go ahead and put the back on. This is, these are cut at 10 degree angles. The ones that are attached to the arms on each side will have pocket holes going up into the top, but none in the bottom because we're gonna attach it to the arm itself. And then on the corners, they'll have pocket holes in the top and the bottom. And then we'll have one in the middle on the long side. Make sure that this backboard is even with this back slat so that you, if it's too far forward, then your cushions won't fit. We better test those first. Perfecto, she says. So now it's time we're going to put the top piece on to cap off these uh, end grains. If you leave that end grain exposed like that, it's just going to soak up water. Uh, so I want to cap it with this uh, top board. I went ahead and drilled two pocket holes in one of these 45 miters. And what that's going to do is when we get it up there, you'll be able to attach these two so they don't flex over time because they're just kind of standing out there over by themselves. And then we'll attach from underneath the pocket holes up into these uh, top face boards there. So I wanna make sure it's flush with the front side of this. And then you just wanna make sure your corners are lining up before you attach everything. And now that I know everything's gonna line up, I can go ahead and attach it. I got my top rail on, it's on there, pocket hole glued and screwed, man. That's a good place to rest your arm. It's at a good height to rest your arm, I'm five foot 11. We're gonna put the back rails on now to help support those back cushions. And they're just gonna be two by sixes as well all the way around, just gonna run two of them spaced equally. Uh, and then we'll pocket hole them in there. And then we'll be ready for stain right after we sand it. But first I'm gonna run a chamfer bit around this top piece so that it matches all the side pieces. So for the pocket holes that are facing down, you wanna make sure you fill those with uh, I, li I like to use a 3 8 inch dowel. You can buy pocket hole plugs if you don't want to cut these. But I usually cut about a two inch piece off, put uh, glue on there. So that's gonna prevent water from getting down in there and just standing. So I just 
uh, drive those in there until you hear it bottom out and then you just let that glue dry for 30, 45 minutes, whatever it takes. And then I'll just take this flush trim saw, cut it off smooth and then we'll sand everything else to, so that it's plugged. And I'm gonna plug those also just for aesthetics. Now it's time to put the back supports on to support those cushions. And these are just pocket hold in from the back. I used a scrap piece of two by to space them out from the bottom of the bench and also between the two boards themselves. And then we come back and fill those pocket holes with the same dowel method as before. This thing is a beast to move. It took five of us to get it to the backyard to get it ready for the staining. I've got the whole thing assembled and sanded. Now it's time to stain it or put an oil on it. This is Australian timber oil from Cabot. It's a Jahara brown color that we're gonna be using. It's made for outdoor furniture and this is what's gonna help protect it from the elements as much as possible. And I'm using my Home Right Finish Max sprayer. It's a very cheap, inexpensive sprayer for about a hundred bucks. Spray whatever you want with it, whether it be oil-based or even water-based. And I just put one coat of this Australian oil on there. Just be careful not to spray it too thick because it will run. Once it's sprayed on there, we let this dry for 24 hours before we moved it onto the deck. Surprisingly, with a lot of effort, four of us was able to get it onto the deck. Hey, click that box right there. It takes you to the next set of videos. Clicking that box is the best way to support this channel. If you click the box, you get the big old virtual fist bump. Also, if you had not subscribed already, go ahead and click that subscribe button now. Click the bell icon next to it so you get notified of all our new content. We've got a lot coming for you. We appreciate your support so much.